Please stand. Our service begins on page 264 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their lack has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among peoples? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He, satisfy, he satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is 
His mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows where we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and the place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children. On those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingdomship has domain over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he was made to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. 
And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, Miss Mary um, could not drive from Clinton today. That's why she's not with us. So um, she decided to stay home to make sure she was safe. There were a few bridges that were still closed between her and here. So if you're wondering where Mary is, it's where she is. <clears throat> well, welcome to Lent, guys. We did it. I had a friend ask today, is this the first day of Lent 2021? Or is this the, like the 340th day of Lent 2020? Not exactly sure, right? Maybe it's both. I don't know. <clears throat> but I've been thinking about this, this, this Lenten practices that we do. And y'all have all heard me say before things like, um, you know, we, we often do things like give up chocolate for Lent. And that's fine as long as chocolate's actually something that's standing between you and God. It's perfectly fine. Or, or we go, hey, I'm going to give up, uh, you know, I'm going to give up Coke for Lent. And, and maybe Coke is, maybe you drink a lot of it. I don't know. And maybe it really stands in the way of you. You do? You drink a lot of Coke? Oh, you drink a lot of Coke. Well, I mean, maybe you give up Coke for Lent. I don't know, Ken. But, but we, 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 we give up these things for Lent. And I'm not telling you not to. And I'm not going to tell you to take on certain things. You need to figure this out for yourself. You need to be... Um, really intentional about what it means to have a Lenten discipline. The thing I want you thinking about this year as you move into Lent is that, you know, this, this past year has been the strangest years of most of our lives. Uh, if, you ha if this isn't the strangest year you've had, I'd like to know. Because I'd like to know what the strangest year you had was. Because this has been pretty weird. Um, work's been different. School's different. Church is different. Everything has been different. Everything has been uprooted and, 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 and moved around and changed. And we, we interact with one another, one another differently. We, we interact with, with strangers differently. We pump our gas differently. We pay our bills differently. Everything that we do has been impacted and touched by this virus and our response to it. To the point that I don't know anybody who isn't ready for us to be somewhere where we're past this virus, where we're... We're in a place where we can quit wearing masks and we're in a place where we can have communion in both kinds again. And we're in a place where we can take these masks off and sing in church because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't run the risk of spreading a virus to people who, who don't need to catch it. Everything has been impacted by it. And as I've been thinking about that year, and I've been thinking about Lent 2021, I think this past year is a really good year for us as we enter into Lent. In the same way that we've taken notice that in our communities there's, some, there, there's a virus that is dangerous, that, it, that it's, 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 it poses a particular threat to those folks who are older and who have underlying health issues, we, we noticed this and we've responded to it as a society. Now granted, there's different levels of response and I get that some people still don't wear a mask and I get that some people are still convinced that this is some governmental hoax and all those things and everything in between. I get all that. But the majority of us have responded. Y'all are sitting in here with masks on your face right now. I forgot to take mine off for the sermon, so at this point I'm just going to keep going with it. We, 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 we've adapted. We've changed. We do pump our gas differently. We've learned to live our life this way and to do the things that we need to do to protect one another. We've learned how to love our neighbor from afar. We've learned how to do communion on the go. We've learned how to do things differently 
as families, as a church, as a community, as a nation, and as the world. We've learned how to do things differently. We've adapted. And that is exactly what Lent is about. Lent is about being intentional for a period of time in the year and adapting our lives to what God is calling us to. Being intentional in our life. Saying, you know what, if I need to wear a mask, that's what I'll do because there's a virus. Well, we do the same thing in Lent where we say, if I need to give up Coca-Cola, then that's what I'm going to do. If I need to take on some new practice, I'm going to take it on. If this is what I need to do to adapt my life to who God is calling me to be, to, to touch and to experience God in some new way over the next 40 days, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's what Lent is. Lent is a yearly, 40-day period of time where just like for the past year we have responded to COVID, we're intentional about responding to God. We're intentional about saying, here is something that I can do that will move me a little more deeply into who God has created me to be, that will help me be more faithful to who God is calling me to be, that will allow me to do the ministry God is calling me to do a little more faithfully, that empowers me to be more loving to my neighbor, that empowers me to be more loving to whomever, that allows me to be who God is calling me to be. And whether that's giving up Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola or cookies or or, or giving up, you know, I don't know, something bigger than that. Social media, maybe. Getting off of social media and not posting political posts on social media. I know that for some, that in and of itself would be like hell. That would be a good Lent right there. I know for others, it, it's other things. It's whatever it is. Maybe, maybe you take up exercise. I don't, I don't really care what it is you give up. And I don't really care what it is that you take on. It's the point of it. It's why are we doing it? We do it so that we can be shaped and molded a little more deeply into who God has made us to be. And I think that when we do this, that this gospel text becomes one that rings true in our life. It becomes less about, I gave up Coke for Lent. I gave up cookies for Lent. I'm going to do something for Lent new or whatever it is. And it becomes more about going into our room and praying in private or doing these things where God who is moving in our lives in a, in a private, intimate way, in a secret way, is stirring in us and moving in us and we are trying to desperately and faithfully find a response to it. And if we move into this Lent, into every Lent, that way, and we have good practice, if we move into this Lenten season right now, starting today, the same way that we've moved into the response to coronavirus for a year, but specifically related to our faith and to our life in Christ, then I am certain that when we get to Holy Week and to Easter, we will all have a story that says that somehow or another in this Lent, in this period of time in my life, in these 40 days, when I did this thing or when I stopped doing these things or whatever it is, I experienced God. God moved me and shaped me and changed me and I am now empowered. I am now shaped and, and made more ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus at Easter and to get on being who God has created me to be in this world, to get on living into the ministry that God has made me for, to get on doing the work that God has called me to do. And all it requires from us is something that we're very, very capable of an intentional 40 days of adapting our life to God's way, adapting our life to God's will, doing it faithfully so that we can be people that God has made us to be and so that when Easter gets here, we are ready to indeed step into the good news of the risen Christ and to take that good news into the world that will always need to hear it. Amen. Please stand. And if you're watching at home, I don't normally ask you to stand, but being how it's Ash Wednesday in the beginning of Lent, I would ask you to stand at home as well.
Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a, <clears throat> a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word and to make <clears throat> a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As a part of our ongoing response to the virus, this year's imposition of ashes is a little different. So as you come forward for your normal, where we would normally impose ashes upon you, I invite you to pick up a little container of ashes and then go back to your pews and we will impose ashes upon each other in our pews or on ourselves as, we, as, as, as necessary. So at this time, I would invite you forward for ashes. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. For the record, Edgar and I have both had the virus, and Edgar's also had his vaccine, uh, vaccines, in case anybody's wondering. Remember that you are dust, to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We will now read Psalm 51, beginning on page. 266, responsibly by whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright when you judge me. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. 
Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body we have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your powerful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O oh God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O oh God, of my salvation. Open my lips, O oh Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We've been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all of our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, from the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments or uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of your resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to His ministers to declare and pronounce to His people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe His holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech Him to grant us true repentance and His Holy Spirit, that those things may please Him which we do on this day, and the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to His eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Take that plate for me, okay? And put that back over there for me. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Please be seated. 
So a few very short announcements. Um, <clears throat> I know the weather's been absolutely crazy this week, but uh, thank you all for being here this evening. And for those of you who are watching online, we're glad that you are joining us online. Um, <clears throat> if you need more ashes, or if you have someone who would like communion to go at home or your neighbor, please let us know as soon as church is over and we can prepare that for you and send you home with it. And we would be happy to do that. Um, <clears throat> also, just a note about tonight's service. We, we are in Lent, so we're using Eucharistic Prayer C. Um, I really don't use Eucharistic Prayer C because like a lot of people always joke with me and say, well, you use it during Lent because it's your least favorite. And I said, no, that's not actually true. I mean, it may be true. But I use it because it's one of the more penitent Eucharistic prayers that we have, and so it's perfect for your C, I mean, uh, for Lent. But there are responses in it that are your portion, so be sure you have a prayer book with you so you can respond at the appropriate time during that portion of the service. <clears throat> and as always, um, I invite you uh, at Lent, I mean, uh, at communion to just come forward. We'll do our communion in the cup, and you'll go back to your pew, and we'll receive all of those together at one time. I believe that is it in the way of announcements, unless, Beth, am I forgetting something? Um, church on Sunday, barring the weather, we will have our normal gathering. Um, I don't think the weather's supposed to be bad on Sunday. And also just want to remind you guys that we are doing a fish fry this coming Saturday. It's a drive through fish fry. All we need to know is, is that you're coming, you drive through, pay for your plates, we'll put them through the window, and you'll drive on. So it's not a fellowship event. It's a come and buy some fish. Jermaine Washington with Pete Williams Barbecue is frying that for us. Um, he's fried fish for us before. The man can cook, y'all. Just saying. So if, if you like catfish, come get you some catfish plates on Saturday because they're going to be really good, I promise. Oh, thank you. And then we will be starting our, um, our Lenten discipline of Stations of the Cross every Friday at 6.30. We'll start that um, day after tomorrow, this coming Friday. Um, it's not normally a big, big crowd. If it becomes a big, big crowd this year, I mean, you never know. If it becomes a big crowd, we'll move it outside or we'll do something appropriate to make sure we can follow the social distancing rules. But um, if we have our normal size crowd, we will do the stations in here and we'll stay appropriately distanced from one another, I assure you. Is that it? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. 
God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses in this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining the heavenly choir with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> and so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection, and we await the coming of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the word and world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. the bread of heaven, 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keeping everlasting life. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep us all in everlasting life. using the post-communion prayer found on page 365. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve You with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.